Recent data shows there's a growing movement to censor books in schools, with this year on track for the highest number of banned books on record. More than 1,600 titles across 32 states, including New Jersey, with the bulk targeting characters and topics in the LGBTQIA community. As Melissa Rose Cooper reports, it coincides with a time many teachers use to celebrate freedom of speech and education. Part of the obligation of a children's author is to promote education and, and awareness about the world around us and about life. And that's what Will Mara has tried to do in the hundreds of books he has written. Mara was recognized in 2020 as New Jersey Author of the Year for his literary contributions, so it was surprising to learn a couple of his books raised concerns about whether children should be allowed to read them. I understand completely the idea that you want your children to be um, have the best life possible, have the safest lives possible, but keeping them ignorant about things that they'll inevitably encounter is kind of like sending a soldier into battle without armor or ammunition. Yet the issue of whether a book should be banned has become increasingly present at schools and libraries here in the states and across the country, especially when it concerns controversial topics like race, gender, and sexual preference. I think what's really important for people to understand is that just how unprecedented this is. We do not normally see in the United States lists of books being removed from school libraries in droves. Jonathan Friedman is the director of Free Expression and education programs at Penn America. His reports, banned in the USA, found more than 2,500 instances of books being banned from public schools during the 2021-2022 school year, affecting nearly 4 million students. I think there is unquestionably a political element. A lot of um, people saw what happened with Glenn Youngkin in the Virginia governor's race, where quote unquote parents' rights were a key theme. And I think people are trying to replicate that in other places. But as they have done so, the impact has been more draconian, really. Basically, there's this idea that if one parent objects to something, they should be able to hold hostage the kind of education and le learning and books that are available in the school library for all students in the district. And, you know, that's patently not so. And certainly the Supreme Court has offered us guidance in this regard. Um, they've carefully and narrowly defined what is unprotected speech in the United States. And it's a very narrow category of speech that is not protected under their precedence. Um, just because a book will touch on topics dealing with things like puberty, where babies come from, uh, gender identity or sexual orientation does not make it inappropriate or um, make it uh, illegal. The Supreme Court's decision in 1982 leading to an annual Ban Books event. Last week marked its 40th anniversary. And the purpose of it is to celebrate and remind people about our freedom to read and the need to protect it. North Huntington High School librarian Martha Hickson says everyone should have the right to choose what they want to read. If there is a book that does not suit your purposes or for some reason offends you, there's a very handy device on that book. It's called a cover. You can just close it and put it back on the shelf. Uh, your refusal or lack of desire to read a book does not give you the right to restrict others from reading it. Book advocates say ultimately it's the parent's decision if they want their child to read a particular book. But as the law protects the freedom to read, everyone should respect the right for any book to remain on a shelf. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Melissa Rose Cooper.